Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we're going to be writing an equation of a line when we're just given a graph. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. I'm given two different types of graphs, and you can pick your method and see which one you like. Method number one, if you're given two points, you can always calculate the slope. It's the rise over the run, so you can use the slope equation, or you can just look at it and see how high, far it changes up and down. That's the rise. And then the run is how far it changes from left to right. Once you have the slope, you can use the point slope form of a line. Let me demonstrate how you would do that. So up here, I have the point slope form of a line equation right there. And we're given a point for negative 2. And you can also see that there's a couple other points here, like this one here hits directly on the x-axis. That one's kind of off a little bit, so I'm going to use this point here and presume that it hits right there at the point 2, 0. Now, to get the slope, what I'm going to do is see how much it changes up and down from my first point to my second point. So it goes from here to here. It changes 1, 2, yeah, just 2. There we go, 1, 2. So now, I'm going from this point to this point, so it's going down 2. So I would say that it has a rise of negative 2. So if I have my rise over my run, I would say my rise is negative 2. My run is moving from left to right, so that's going to be a positive number. And it goes forward 1, 2 as well. It goes forward 2. So because it goes forward 2, my rise, then, or my run, I'm sorry, would be positive 2. Now, this can be reduced down to just being negative 1. 2 over 2 is 1, and it's negative. So my slope is negative 1. All right, so I'm going to substitute that into my equation right there, negative 1. Now, I also have a couple other pieces of information. I have a couple of points here. Specifically, I have this point for negative 2. So I'm going to take that as my x and my y. So x1 is equal to 4, and y1 is equal to negative 2. And I'll plug that into my equation, y minus y1, so y minus negative 2, or in other words, the opposite of negative 2, which would be positive 2. And my slope is in there, negative 1. And then I'll have x minus x1, or minus or the opposite of x1, which is negative 4. And that's it. So now I've written the equation in, slope, in point slope form. So you can see the equation up there. That's the equation of this line. Again, when you're given a point on the graph, you can figure one other one out. Or if you're ever given two points, you can discover the slope and use one of those points, either one, to go ahead and solve. Now. The other method is to use the y-intercept, or to see, use the slope-intercept form of a line, if you can see clearly the y-intercept. On this previous one, I wasn't absolutely sure, because of the way the line was drawn, that that was right on that mark. So I didn't use the slope-intercept form. But in this next example, I'm going to make a very clear y-intercept. And when you have a clear y-intercept, it goes a lot faster to do it this way. So again, I'm going to calculate my slope from here down to negative 3, negative 1. I go down 1 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be negative 5. And then I go this direction, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. Now, I can consider my rise over my run like that, where it goes down 5 and to the left 3, rise over run, negative 5 over negative 3. Or you can also look at it as going from this point to that point, where it goes up 5 and to the right 3. So it would be positive 5 over positive 3. Both ways, you end up with a positive result. Negative 5 over negative 3 is the same as 5 over 3. Right? So it doesn't matter which point you start at when you're looking at a graph and calculating slope. It really doesn't. Just like when you use the slope 
um, equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It doesn't matter which point you use first. Now we have the slope. We have right there our y-intercept. That's a y-intercept of 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can just plug in the information. y is equal to our slope, 5 over 3, x plus our y-intercept, 4. And we're done. That's the equation of the line. Okay, we didn't have to do a lot of calculations. You're always going to have to find the slope. And if you're given a point, you can use the point-slope form like we did in the previous question. Or if you're given the y-intercept really clearly, then you can use the y-intercept form of a line and use that to go ahead and, and solve for the equation of the line. And here are those, those points again. If you're given the y-intercept, use the slope-intercept form. It's faster. If you have two points, find the slope and then use the point-slope form.